Happy New Year to all! And with a new year comes a new member to the Drive Home Review family. Everybody say hello to Richfield. Yeah, he's a little snooty, tends to like the highbrow pictures, but he's a good egg. Joining Dudley, Chewy, Zoe, and Mr. Chirpy, and myself for another year of watching movies and talking into a cell phone as I drive home from them. And what better way to kick off the brand spanking new year than by turning and looking ass backwards at a couple films I didn't get a chance to see in 2018, but I'm going to take care of that now before they get out of the theater. So we begin, just because it was the one that started, uh, started first, we begin with Aquaman. And, uh, hmm, this one, this one's kind of confusing to me, I'm going to be honest, because I can't say that I hated it. I can't say it was not entertaining. I can't say that visually it wasn't really, really interesting. I can't say that there weren't parts of it that were really fun. But I also can't be like everyone else. Once again, that's, you know, it's me on the, on the fringe here. I also can't say that I really liked it that much. Uh, it, there, there was a lot wrong with it. Just that, and that just kept me disconnected and kept me from enjoying the, the film as a whole. Um, so let's talk about what does kind of work. Because everything in this film either kind of works or doesn't work. Um, so let's talk about the thing everybody talks about. Um, and that is Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa has you know really found a star vehicle here. Because everybody loves him. Everybody's drooling over him. He's the greatest human being ever, apparently. Um, and, you know, I, I was not impressed with him in Justice League. You know... He's an actor who has a really good look. You know, in, in wrestling terms, they say he's got a good look. He's got a unique look. He's got a powerful and intimidating look. You know, if he, if he was a pro wrestler, he'd be, you know, he would really be pushed hard because just on the way he looks, the kind of that smirky little grin he gives, and all that kind of stuff, he really. Uh, really sells a lot just with very little. And But when it comes time for him to act, to deliver lines with any degree of emotion or weight, uh, I'm afraid the big guy just doesn't have the chops. <laughs> now, you would think... Now, here's the thing that really kind of struck me with this film. You would think that that wouldn't be as important in a film like this, any film like Aquaman. But as we proved with Thor, and let let us not let us not uh, kid ourselves here. This movie wants to be Thor and Black Panther so bad. It wants to have both of those franchises you know themes so fucking bad and it, it does not work on either way Let, starting with why it doesn't work for Thor because Thor the original had the benefit of having a Shakespearean actor at the helm a man who brought in very talented actors and you may disagree, but Chris Hemsworth, I find, is a very talented actor. And Tom, Tom Hiddleston has proven himself a talented actor. You know, Anthony Hopkins is, you know, fucking Anthony Hopkins. So he was smart enough to bring in Shakespearean actors who could bring a sense of levity and real-world weight to these kings making these massive space... Viking shit, declarations of glory and honor. It's the same logic as to why when, you know, Star Trek Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager was going on, the people that got to play Klingons were Shakespearean stage actors because they could emote these big, powerful words but still connect the emotion and the acting to them. And that is not the case in this movie. That's not the case with Jason Momoa. 
it's not the case with the rest of the cast. And it's not, it's not like the rest, it doesn't have good actors in it. It's just saying they, when they speak these lines, these comic book lines, they sound ridiculous. Now, here's where the film almost saves itself, is that where the film worked is when all the other actors are doing these very ridiculous lines of, you must come and unique, unite the seven kingdoms or else Ocean Master will find the trident of who's it's and flame it on the what now, is that is when it works is when Jason Momoa looks at them and goes, okay, whatever. And I, you know, that's when I was like, okay, the film is a little tongue in cheek. You know, you got all these people doing these big, you know, all these people in silly costumes, you know, doing these silly lines about silly things, and, and our hero is like the like a like a drunken frat boy going, whatever. And I and that's when it worked. That was when, when it was funny to me. Um, that didn't last long. It didn't last long for me. Um, I will say again, Jason Momoa is a very unique screen presence. He, I, I can't say he doesn't fit the role or do some good things with it. And I can't say that his best acting and best moments in here are, again, kind of akin to what he was doing when he was on Game of Thrones, is when he's telling you things with a look or with a, you know, with a step back. There's a scene where he's reunited with his... Uh, his long lost mother, spoiler alerts, but everyone's seen it by now. Um, Nicole Kidman, you know, deep within the darkness of who's it's and whatever. Um, and he sees her for the first time. She's stepping towards him and he just takes a little step back. It was just a little thing, but it was a really smart blocking decision. And it was a really smart acting choice on his part because it, it said so much right within that little movement. So, Visually, he's a striking actor, and a, and he has some good things to offer. But the script doesn't do much to help him. And yeah, I, I think you know I, I, they, sh they should have turned up the dude bro of him a bit more, and let and and really kind of play like I was saying, play the concept of this, you know, surfer dude, for lack of better terms you know, caught in this world of, you know, lofty language and ridiculous costumes. Um, so yeah, I think that's the main problem is that it's too, here's the other main problem, the plot, and this is where it's trying to be, uh, Black Panther and Game of Thrones. So, you know, it's trying to mix those two things with the, who's king and who's the rightful king and what's the rightful king and, you know, who I'm the rightful king, you're the rightful king, well, you're a bastard, you can't be king. It's trying to mix all those things. Here's the thing, though. Black Panther had a very streamlined plot. The plot was very simple, as it usually is for the Marvel films. The plot is streamlined, and it lets the strength of the characters carry it. Game of Thrones has multiple hours of television with which to tell its very complex Com complex, complex, sprawling meta narrative. This thing's trying to do it now. It's a long fucking movie, two and a half hours long, and it felt like it. Um, and it's trying to get all these complicated things in there. Oh, God. you know, of trying to come back and be king, but to be king, you have to go find the trident to unite the seven kingdoms, and you have to introduce the seven kingdoms, and you know his evil brother wants to be the ruler of the seven kingdoms and he doesn't like Aquaman and you know uh you know but he to, to become the king of the seven kingdoms he has to I'm, I'm not even sure what he's doing with the others they're the big climactic battle the undersea battle I'm not sure who the fuck he's fighting or why you know <laughs> he's fighting Dr. Zoidberg and his people and you know, and I'm like, wait, what, what's happening here? You know, so again, I think they, you know, in, in between all that, you know, uh, Jason Momoa and really bad red wig woman are off on some fetch quest, which is taking them like an Indiana Jones adventure. You know, I swear they should have had the, the music going, taking them from the Sahara Desert to Italy. They're fly, fighting Black Manta. There's just so much. And I think this movie would have really benefited from streamlining. You know, like, the movie opens 
with him fighting Black Manta. And <laughs> what's funny about this movie is that it gives Black Manta, our villain, or one of our villains, a very sympathetic backstory to the point you're almost like, why can't he be the fucking movie? You know, I can't. Um, but yeah, that's the problem is Black Manta is an interesting enough character, but he's a henchman here, but he's also a primary villain. It's a, there's too fucking much. There's too much. And again, the movie goes on for two and a half hours and it just it's so exhausting with okay we get here great we're gonna no wait now you must go in there and prove you're worthy to giant space monster from pacific rim oh shit well now we got to do that but now we got to go fight these people over here and do this over here and da 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 yeah just too fucking much um the other actors, I think, do a fair enough job. They're not terrible. I don't think there's a bad actor in there. I think they're doing the best what they have. The only thing I have to say, and this is, I feel bad saying this, um, Jason Momoa and the young lady playing his lady friend, Maria is the character's name. I can't remember the actor's name. They have no chemistry. There is, they, it is sans chemistry. All right. And they want him to have the, you know, Tony Stark, uh, Pepper Potts chemistry with her. And it just, duh. Or the Natalie Portman, uh, Chris Hemsworth, uh, chemistry. And it just does not work. It, it, they do not have chemistry. And I'm sorry to say that because neither one of them are bad necessarily. They're doing the best they can, but they just do not work well with these lines off each other. It really just... Uh, um, visually, the movie has some really striking, um, really awesome uh, elements to it. Some really great fight scenes. The costumes look pretty good. And which is interesting when you're taking something as ridiculous as like Aquaman's costume or Ocean Master's or Black Manta's. They look okay for the most part, I think. But the special effects in this, first of all, visually the visual style of this is just all over the motherfucking place. And in a movie where everything has to be CGI because you're trying to do things underwater, I understand that. But the movie is like visually somewhere in between episode two attack of the clones and a sci-fi original movie. You know, that is some of the worst green screen shots I have seen in a movie like ever. And especially in a modern 2018 big budget blockbuster thing. You know, it really... It, it, it's really bad. Some of the, the green screen is terrible. Um, and yeah, the, the, the movie doesn't really have a visual style of its own. It feels like everything is lifted from other films. There's elements of... I mean, there's a, there's a scene... The scene where Mario takes... Aquaman to Atlantis for the first time. It is a ripoff of flying into Wakanda from Black Panther and the shots of Asgard from Thor. There's a fucking bridge that all the little space or all the little water cars are lined up on and it looks like a rainbow fucking bridge. And I'm like, come on. You're doing Atlantis. How can you how can you be boring and you know, cliche in creating Atlantis. Come the fuck on. Um, the giant marine monster looks like something huge out of Pacific Rim. Looks like one of the kaiju. You know, um, the the water foot soldiers, the the army soldiers from from under the sea. That just is a weird sentence to say. You know, <laughs> um, that serves our foot soldiers. They fucking look like the paratroopers from uh, Power Rangers Turbo. That Diva Tox would send to like to, to like, crush those infernal Power Rangers. <laughs> like seriously, they look bad. Um, and there's this scene. There's a really good fight scene in, uh, in Sicily, in a village in Sicily. Uh, kind of a two-way fight with a uh, Aquaman and Black Manta fighting, and Maria being chased by a bunch of the um, a bunch of the the Diva Tox's soldiers there. And there's this 
she's running off to the rooftops, and one of them is running kind of below in the houses, smashing through the walls, trying to cut her off. And the guy running, like, you could tell he could not run in that huge, bulky armor. He's like, burp, 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 burp. it was pretty, it looked ridiculous. Um, I feel like I'm coming down on this movie a lot, and uh, I don't mean to. You know, I, I think there was a lot of good... I gotta say, I, okay, let's let's try to be positive with it. It is by far the best DC uh, film that I've seen in a while. Of the DC cinematic universe, or whatever the hell you want to call it, um, it's by far the best because it's the first one to kind of yank its head out of its ass and not try to put on all of this pretense of being something much deeper and bigger and more important, except in one instance. The score for this thing is obnoxious because it has that Batman v Superman thing of every music sting is big and grand and really important, you know? And the music alternates between like techno 80s Thor Ragnarok type music to Celtic, you know, flute music. It's like it's all over the fucking place. Anyway, sorry, I, I couldn't even do that without, you know, dissing the film. But it, uh, it, it's not, it's not as up its ass as Batman v Superman or Man of Steel. It, it's more, uh, more cohesive and clearly doesn't suffer from the problems of, you know, Justice League. And I'd say it's even better than Wonder Woman because it remembers that it's a based on a comic book and thus has really beautiful imagery and really great comic shots. And again, does, isn't kind of weighed down by that, this is important kind of feel that Wonder Woman had. All in all, I have to say this movie is kind of a microcosm for the 2018 at the movies. It's it had promise. And in some ways, some places it really lives up to that promise and where that promise is really really on on display, it's a it's a beautiful memorable thing to behold. But so much of it is convoluted, mucky, overly overdone just trying so hard to be everything that it doesn't really amount to much of anything. So, final grade for Aquaman, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say a C. Just a solid C. Ah, because he's the king of the C's, get it? You know, not a, not C+, plus, not C-, minus, just a C. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't feel bad for watching it, but I am left with asking myself the question, would I ever watch it again? And the answer is, I don't really know. I don't know if I really need to see this again. Beautiful visuals and all that, yeah. But you know, if that's all there is, I can look at some. I can look at a painting. So yeah, I know a lot of people love this movie, but I, I, I'm lukewarm. Uh, so before we can move on to. Uh, to 2019 and its offerings of cinema, we have one more from 2018 to watch. So I'm about to go do that right now. So it's great to be back. Wonderful to be doing these again. Uh, so let's let's wrap up 2018 in a nice tight bow. So until next time, which will be fairly soon, drive safe and me and the gang will see you at the movies.